right, welcome to Creator Hardware. And today we're talking about setting up an Adobe render server. First, let's talk about why you may need a render server instead of doing it natively on the desktop you edit videos on. And it comes down to production. If you are a video editor that gets paid per edit, you wanna do stuff as quickly as you can. Well, we all know when you're in the middle of a render, you're not able to move on with editing another video. Whereas if you have a render server, you can just send it off to the server and go on to your next project. That's the biggest advantage. Now there's huge companies like Linus Media Group, LTT, they use a render server. What they do is they send it off to the server, it renders it, it outputs. So we're gonna talk about how to set it up. They need to be the same Windows operating system as I've got Windows Pro, Windows Pro 10, and they need to have the same type of graphics card. What I mean by that is you don't wanna mix NVIDIA and AMD. You want the same graphics card type, i.e. two NVIDIAs or two AMDs. You don't wanna edit on an AMD system and then try to render it with an NVIDIA graphics card. Now, processors doesn't make a difference. That editing PC is AMD. The render server, which is my old editing PC, is Intel, both with NVIDIA graphics cards. Let's talk about setting it up. First thing you're gonna need to do is set up a Windows network share drive. Now this drive can be on either computer, it just has to be accessed by both PCs, and all of your media files need to also be in a shareable drive that both PCs can access. Now I use my NAS as where I store all my footage. So both PCs can pull it for Premiere and a media encoder. So all the assets are there. My saved Premiere files are on the Adobe network share. So it knows where the assets are. They're in the same place. Whereas you have a scratch drive on that PC that's not available to your render PC, it's not gonna be able to find the footage and you're gonna get those ugly file not found, you know, things in your edit or in your render. So you need to have a network share. If you don't know how to set one of those up, let me know in the comments. I can do a video on just strictly setting that up, but it's not hard. It's built into Windows. It just has to be over the network and you just have to set it up to be a network share. Now, if you look over here, you see how I've got local disk, my operating system, I've got a scratch drive, I've got two bulk storage, which are just hard drives, and then I have Adobe Premiere with that little network attached icon. If I click on it, I've got media cache, media cache files, output, I've got a test file, that's you know something I created, and I got a watch folder. This is something that you need to set up. It's a what's called a watch folder. Now let's go over here to media encoder. That's how you're gonna set it up. You wanna click this box, auto encode watch folders. You wanna come over here, hit file, add watch folder. And it will go to that shared drive once you've set it up as your default in media encoder. And it will create a watch folder. That's what this is. So anytime you put a file into the watch folder, it will automatically encode it for you in the presets you've already set. So once it pops over to, into this file, it will start rendering it. Once it's done, it will come into this output folder. Now that output folder will be created automatically when you set up the watch folder. So that's where it will output its footage and then you just drag and drop it to wherever you want it in your systems and boom, done. Now the advantages of having a render server. So you go to finish a huge project and you're sitting there twiddling your thumbs because your system is you know utilized to the point where you can't go and start editing another video because so you get further and further behind. That's that's where a render server really comes in handy. Either large editing teams or just a lot of stuff or a lot of work that you needs to get done. So you send it over to the server, it renders it, and then your PC is free to do another edit. 
Love that. Love the added efficiency. Once it's rendered, you know, like I sent it over here, I can work on my thumbnail. You know, once it's output, I can upload it and, you know, work on another project. That's the key to having a render server. If you have marginal components in your system and you've had a Adobe system crash, you know how much fun it can be. Sending that file, you have to save it. So send it in over to a different PC to render. It just sits there and goes, you don't have anything else going on it. Awesome. So that's the reason I set up this render server. Now I, my main channel, I batch film and I batch edit. So I wanna get through that as much as possible, as quickly as possible. I do it on Saturday, so the more time I save on Saturday, the more time I have to shoot these videos. So whole reason I set this up is just to save myself some time batching videos. Now let's talk about the process of sending it to that watch folder. You save a copy in Premiere Pro to that watch folder, save a copy. You've already done all the edits, everything's already done. You save a copy to that watch folder and just automatically pops up and starts rendering. Quick, easy, you're done. Save a copy in the shared file just in case something goes wrong with the render Adobe and move on. It, it, it's, I can't tell you how nice it is just to send it off to a different PC so I can continue working. It's, I love it. Let's talk hardware in a render server. It does not have to be as strong as an editing PC. My render, my render server is a 9900K with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200. It's got a NVIDIA 3080 Ti. I know a little overkill for what I'm using it for, but I game on it, so that's why it's set up like this. But this used to be my editing PC. ProRes is choppy as hell trying to edit because of the 32 gigabytes of RAM. Rendering, however, does fine. Now it's not as fast as my 3950X over there. 3950X outputs it a lot faster, but while I'm working on that, this is rendering so I can move on and have you know, no issues continuing to edit. That's the advantage, you know? Now for me, I already had this PC. It was merely just setting stuff up. So yes, the renders take longer than they would on that PC, but I can still edit while it's rendering. If you're interested in setting up a render server and you need more information, there is a post in the level one tech forums Go there, search Premiere, it'll come up. It gives you a written description. So it's not hard, just set it up. As long as you got a separate PC that can handle rendering your footage, easy peasy. Hope you enjoyed this video. So as always, hit record, hit upload. Thanks for watching. This is Creator Hardware.